Just change shirts. It's the same day. <laughs> I feel like I have to tell you because it feels like that's a deception. It's not a deception. They need to be different, clearly lineated readings. But the one I just did was so beautiful. I want to carry on. Also, I'm going to change my shirt again and do one more reading so that I have published to be released readings up to and including my birthday. Um, because, which is tomorrow when you're seeing this, because I want to have my birthday to myself or, you know, to me. I don't want to be making a video. It has to, it has to be a day I celebrate. So doing three readings today in different shirts, but the energy of the last one was so exciting. I'm really thrilled to move on. So let's let's open with the room again. There's a really strong wind today. Wind of change. I like a wind of change. So I'm going to be 56 tomorrow, people. I have no plans. I don't know what I'm doing. There's a part of me that wishes I had... Uh, the money to go and have a massage because my legs have been hurting it started with that knee ache then yesterday it went into my thigh and my thigh went numb on my right leg only my right leg my left leg's completely fine and today there's a massive tension in the back of my calf it'll go it's all good it's causing me acupuncture it hurts but it's realignment. I've been getting a message of micro realignments. I don't really know what that means yet. So anyway, let's go. Let's see what this message is. Interesting. They turned and they went inside the deck. Now, those of you who follow my readings will know that anything that turns in the deck is something that you have that you can't quite see but it's an energy becoming available but it doesn't mean you're going to grab it. it just means it's something that's there it's interesting i feel like i'm going to show you all three together brombjörk and earthgrap but i kind of want to show it the way it came out so earthgrap björk and brom there's something about this that's in the wrong order and yet if I try and turn it it doesn't quite make sense in any order what do I mean by that I'm just gonna move the pieces around I see and that's breaking a dream I had in which I was moving the pieces of a cosmic jigsaw. We are all moving the pieces of our own personal cosmic jigsaw. And we're trying to fit the pieces together to build a beautiful life story. We haven't got all the pieces because some of the pieces are from this, some of the pieces are gonna sweep in. And this earth grab is kind of like saying, this is the first part of the journey. This is the part where we're dealing with the molecular frequencies of all of our cells. And then sweeping in is this new frequency, but this doesn't sweep in until we scrape away and cleanse some of the old blood songs. And when we've cleansed enough blood songs, we get this, oh, we get this micro realignment and that enables the beginnings. It's like I'm there showing, I'm seeing, they're showing, I'm seeing. There's no one showing me, I'm tuning into it. I need to accept that. You need to accept that. We all need to accept that we are the ones that make and create this jigsaw. So it's like a gentle early winter snow flurry. And that's the beginning of this kind of galactic story hovering in and it's 
it's less harsh than Hagal. Hagal is hailstones. This is a kind of, it's not sleet. It is snowflakes. They are formed. They are microscopic crystals of cosmic realignment and they're coming down and they're touching our bodies and our face and our hands and our arms and they're melting into us. This is the beginning of a soft, beautiful new beginning. Now they make sense. It's almost like we can't make sense of it and then we can. That's so gorgeous. Oh. It's so beautiful. So we have, uh, actually that is the last one. It came into my hand last. See, look, this is incredible. That was how the last reading ended, yesterday's reading, that was 10 minutes ago. <laughs> you see, I want to say that that's to do with, again, the perception of time. I'm making these messages one after another in a group of three, but you're seeing them over three days. So it's showing how time is so easily suspended and warped and transformed. So earth Majin, the earth grip, the grip of the first awakening that we go through, the ancestral bloodlines, bloodlines, not spirit lines. That's interesting. So Earth Majin, this is the first story, the first awakening. And then when this, this galactic snow flurry begins is when you're ready, when you've cleared enough of the blood cherries to begin a new story, a galactic story. It does feel like path of gold, golden path frequency. Then Brom has got this energy of Tia bringing down the galactic spiritual warrior, not doing the bodies, the ancestral bloodline spiritual warrior, warrioring. I'm just making up words now, but a new frequency of stories, songs, galactic melodies coming down and lodging, settling in the cells. And then this energy of Björk is the new now. It's really gorgeous, gorgeous energy. It's interesting it says, uh, it's talking about adapting to the relentless environmental stress. Poplar trees wrap seeds in cotton casings and give these future wishes pre-wrapped and ready mapped to the wind to carry and spread fresh life. So I was reading today about how sometimes people put a kind of fleece over lawns in part of a process to get rid of the crane flies, the daddy long legs that are flying around here was reading about their life cycle really because we kind of think of butterflies and I often think also of dragonflies as being these things that have different transformations you know they have a 13 frequency death card in which they go into the pupa, pupa stage and then often they become like a soup and then from that soup a whole new creation comes out that's really what this is You've done the, we've all been the maggot. <laughs> we've done the maggot stage. We're going into the pupa stage now so that we can emerge as galactic beings. So we're getting new information. But what was fascinating realization today with all this fleece, it's a little bit like we're wrapped in a kind of physical realm fleece but it's it's on a micro cellular level until the old blood songs are cleaned out that discordancy that fuzziness is kind of bleeding into our auras and this is really cleansing cleaning making us shiny people that's that thing about releasing your ancestors 
so that they can wrap you in their light. That must be one of the gifts that they're giving to us. The other thing, it's all coming in too quickly, um, is we think butterflies, dragonflies, these things that transform. It's all flies. <laughs> That's why they're flies. Because flies have egg, then they have the larva stage, then they pupate and then they're reborn. That's no different to us. But the pupa stage is part of being in the first awakening when we can't, where we can't properly communicate with the world around us. We find we want to step away. We're frightened by it because we're changing and we need to protect ourselves. Oh, yesterday's message, how to protect ourselves, standing against the wall. Interesting. Let's just move on. So, I love these messages, everyone. Because we need new narratives, because there's tired old shit being said out there. I'm sorry. So, oh, look, oh, look, oh, look. That's interesting. So we have Make Make and we have Sulphur. Can you see how there's something in the artwork here that's very sort of, well, I wanted to say sort of like uh, an animated river of, of nature and then how this one's somehow much more representative of real. It's like we're moving victoriously into this new narrative, this new galactic narrative soul of all living and material things different to material things all living material things so the other thing i'm getting is the f of the lower heart <laughs> 306 years that's important 306 it's like the three and the six is a Tesla trap frequency of being here in a kind of consciousness, mystical frequency of life and being trapped in that energy, but at the same time also being in so many other spaces, dimensions and times, but we can't sense that. And then this 306, the zero is the cosmic egg of unhatched potential in between this so it's almost like the space for the new divine awakening is sitting waiting the other thing this is a rhythm card because it's one of the modalities um being sulfur cardinal this talks about life affirming it draws out negativity it's the seafloor lakes of molten sulfur awaiting awakening there it is. And this is the card of cosmic egg hunting. Make Make being the creator god of the Rapa Nui on Easter Island. Half buried statues. We are half buried statues. It's time to rise up. So this is a 13-8 rhythm and it's the soul. It's the story of the soul. It's not the body. It's not the mind. It's the soul. What is the soul? The soul is the current song that you are singing while in your embodied thought thought thinking life your embodied thinking life and we're bringing our consciousness from the f sharp of higher consciousness into the f of the lower world this is about becoming more real in the real world but it's a different real world that you're becoming into so 13 8 and f is reminding me of It's reminding me of a series of, oh, Solomon's Ring was a small oratorio that I wrote when I was studying with Erica Fox at the Guildhall, Junior Guildhall. 
Um, in Solomon's ring, he uses the ring. Oh my God, and I just bought a new ring <laughs> to wear. And then I got out my old ring and I put them both on. It's weird how these things all connect in. So in Solomon's ring, the ring gives him control over the demons and he uses it. And there's a whole series of seals of Solomon that lock the demons. They're not demons, they're tribes, they're, they're beings, they're light beings, they're ancestor families. And this is the point at which we unlock them. And, and in the song cycle, this section where he was locking them is really to unlock them. It's 13. It's divine inspiration. Unlocking divine inspiration. I feel like, uh, I feel like I've just lost where all of this came from because something just opened and let something out. This is the new message that keeps coming through. Opening to let something out. Anyway, 13a, interesting, sacris as modius ornius ornus gallus. And I wasn't going to sing them, and then they just came out. And it was by saying their names that there was that realisation that they're misrepresented. They are galactic tribes. There's a lot of 50 energy here. 51, 52, oh, 50, sorry, Ripian, maturing. Make Make 51, Brom sweeping away 52, Sulphur is 54. We don't have, we had 55 in yesterday's reading, we don't have 53. 53 is a number that I see in the world around me a lot. To do with journeys, boarding for a new journey. Oh, no, now 58, the Fruma. So this is a new frequency, cosmic egg hunting, the timbre of the natural world. The timbre of the natural world today is uh, rain and wind. Returning unbroken dreams to the world. Oh, you see, that has never ever made sense before. The unbroken dreams are the dreams of the trapped galactic tribes that we're going to be unlocking. And then the final rune here is 37, Sunsteder. This is the rarefied microscopic alignment. This is the alignment. And it talks often really about solstice. So somehow here... We're getting a preemptive message that's moving us towards the 21st of the 12th, which is always a mirror. Oh, I need to check. Might be on the 22nd this year. Gonna have to check that for you now, people. But this is the first December solstice energy I'm getting. December. Solstice 2024. Oh, that's interesting. So it's on Saturday, the 21st of December, 21st of the 12th. And it's at 9.19 a.m. 9.19 a.m. No, it says it's at 9.21. It depends where you are on the line, but if you're on zero degrees, I would imagine it's at 919. It's a mirror. It's a mirror. It's a mirror. There's a very strong mirroring energy. Also, I want to try and remember this year to pay. Oh, look, it was 1919 as I said that. Mm. So uh, I want to try and remember to mark Yule on that day. It's the first day of Yule, and then you count the 12 days of Yule. There's a day before, which is an, a celebration day. We'll mark that. And then that takes us to the end of the year. And that's the true 12 days of Christmas. It's the 12 days of Yule. 
And that's 12 being that energy of 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 hours in the clock face, the 12 months of the year, and that energy of 13 being the divine inspiration that comes in. Oh, six, nine, nine. Thirteen. It's all here. We've also got what's that one? Seventeen. We've got one seven 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 turning up. But we've also got nine nine six. And this alignment is 37, which is completion, new beginning. But it's not really completion. I want to say appreciation. There's something about this that's just suddenly changed, which is nine is the divine nine. That's the Tesla code for the divine intervention. The 10 is accepting, understanding, and almost sealing the old energies into a rotten egg because then you can cast it away. It's, it's dealt with, it's contained, and then you're left with the one, which is the new beginning. So that's our lovely message. I'll see you.